So after the anger and irritation from the preview images and the leaks and summary that came out for Dragon Ball Super Chapter 65, now that it's released, is it as bad as it seemed? Well, to be completely honest with you, kind of. The negatives are still very apparent and nothing in the chapter really makes up for it, but there's still a lot of cool ideas and things that go on in the chapter. And when all of the reactions and initial thoughts and feelings where rants come from uh, have time to kind of settle, and of course when we're able to look at the chapter as a whole when it's released in a translated form, then we can look at it with a little bit more clear of a mind. But that being said, the negatives in this chapter very much taint all of the positives and just make it as a whole very, very disappointing and kind of irritating to be honest. And that's because I've been enjoying the moral arc so far. I've been interested with all the cliffhangers. It's been exciting. Moro's been a very cunning and cool villain. But this chapter really dissolves all of that. And at this point, I just, I just want it to end. And it probably should have ended in this chapter. But it just feels so dragged out just for the sake of being dragged out. And the writing has Goku doing things that purposefully drag the story out so that Moro can get a leg up. But I will say that the first scene in the chapter is very atmospheric before Goku gives the Senzu to Moro. Now, Goku giving the Senzu to Moro, people have talked about it, I've talked about it in depth, I'm not going to go into it too much anymore, but it is dumb and it is pointless. Listen, it's fine that Goku offers Moro a second chance, okay? It's like, okay, hey, you go back to prison or I'll kill you. Just, you know, I don't want to have to kill you, fine. That's fine. But what Goku does in this chapter takes it to extreme levels. And to be honest, it, it is very uncharacteristic of him to try so hard to get Moro to give up despite everything we've been through in this chapter or, or in this arc as a whole and everybody yelling at him to finish it. Listen, everybody's saying that this is in Goku's character fine you know he he has learned his lesson in dragon ball z he was yelling to gohan to finish sell off and and multiple other villains after that even kid boo he finished off kid boo but he was excited to fight him again so he had him reincarnated why doesn't he do this with moro you know what i'm saying so interestingly, when Moro takes the Senzu, he regenerates his horn in his hand, and initially I thought that he replenished his energy there by using Piccolo's regeneration, thereby confirming that he did still have his copies, just not the ability to do more copying. But that's not the case, the Senzu is actually what regenerates him, and he just does not have any copies or, or even the ability to copy. Um, so I don't know if that's some sort of weird thing just because of of Moro, or if Toyosaro forgot that the Senzu doesn't regenerate limbs. Uh, so Jocko says something kind of funny, saying that Goku didn't need to heal him. Yeah, we are right there with you, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, what happens next is very surprising. Moro says, hey, before I go back to prison, I'm gonna kill you first. <laughs> so he attacks, and that is not surprising whatsoever. We all knew that what would have happened and Goku probably knew that as well but I guess he's just overconfident and Moro breaking his arm on Goku is pretty badass but following this we get number two of stupid Goku he reverts from ultra instinct into base form now this is completely unnecessary again why would you go into base form and put yourself at risk like that unnecessarily? And even more, Jocko yells at Goku and he's like, Hey, this guy just went back on his word. Like you tried and, and you tried before. So enough is enough, right? So finish him. And this is where it starts feeling like the chapter just wants to drag itself out. Sure, Goku really wants to reform this guy, but the the really negative thing about this is that this is this is Moro. Moro is not the one to try this with. He is pure evil through and through. And Goku is he, Goku's listen, Goku's not stupid. Goku is naive and he's ignorance of the world and culture and all that. But when it comes to this stuff, he's he's not dumb. But the writing in this chapter and arc wants you to believe that he is and hasn't learned anything from his past. But Goku has developed. He's developed throughout the series, as we saw in the Cell arc and even the Boo arc, um, since Frieza. 
Frieza was the last one that he really tried to give a second chance to, but what did he do when Frieza came back to destroy the Earth in the original timeline? He killed Frieza, right? He didn't drag things out to this extent. Granted, I do understand that Goku would want to fight this guy because he's got all of his magical tricks and he's really fun to fight or whatever, but dude, everything's at stake here. Like, Goku has even said before that he doesn't know the extent of Moro's magic, so the longer he stays alive, the more chance he has to use his magical abilities and destroy all of your friends and family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, everything revolving around Goku is the negatives that I was talking about that taint the chapter because there's some really good stuff in here. I actually like this scene with Goku and Moro just having a, a little bit of a conversation. The problem is that Goku gave him a Senzu and now he's at complete full power and then he goes into base form. So while I think that the villain and hero having like pausing their fight and having a bit of a conversation um, there's this piece in my brain saying that, hey, Moro should be attacking this guy. He's at full power, Goku's in base form. Granted, Goku can go Ultra Instinct pretty quickly, but what's stopping Moro from trying at this point? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Moro is smart enough to think of a way past Goku's superiority. And I think that if he had found his arm and then asked Goku about Ultra Instinct and then found out that Maris must have Ultra Instinct as well on his own, that would have been really great instead of getting the opportunity to do it because of Goku. Whenever a villain gets a leg up because the hero's actions, then like the heroes are aiding the bad guy. That just makes me not want to root for the good guy, you know what I'm saying? Because they're just working, actively working against themselves. They've worked so hard in this arc to get to where they're at, only to end up here and helping the bad guy to defeat themselves. <laughs> so this is actually when I noticed the paneling in this chapter, and there's a lot of them. Recently, in recent chapters, Toru Taro has done a really good job limiting the number of panels and expressing things visually. But, you know, a lot of times when it comes to dialogue, it becomes like the weaker element of the chapter. So there's a lot of just unnecessary panels in this chapter, but other chapters I thought were really great, especially uh, chapter 64 with Ultra Instinct Goku fighting Moro. I thought that chapter was great. But unfortunately, it's followed up by this chapter, which is pretty messy to be honest. So Moro getting his hand is probably the best part about this chapter because I love his reaction. I love that he sees his hand and his reaction to seeing the hand. He a He's asking about Ultra Instinct and kind of biding his time, distracting Goku just enough so that he can get it. And this is Moro, guys. This is really cool. And the subsequent art with Goku and Moro fighting, especially that two-page spread of Goku and Moro about to clash their fists, freaking awesome, man. So Goku seemingly not wants to hurt the Earth anymore with their battle, goes up into the sky and they start this flying mid-air battle which is really cool. And Moro does something really rad, he splits into two as a strategy and ends up kicking Goku down to the Earth. But he reveals something very, very interesting and he says that their power is now equal which confirms that Goku is now low angel level. That is... <laughs> completely ridiculous like if he is not stronger than Beerus at this point like will he ever be could be could Beerus possibly be low angel level um, I guess we'll find out when we actually see Beerus's full power <laughs> but Goku being to this level of strength uh, here is is still a little disappointing to me I, I still think it would have been more satisfying if he had a little bit more struggle to control Ultra Instinct since he can now do it at will uh, but Moro, while admitting that they are equal strength, he says that he has a ma his magical abilities, which gives him the advantage, which it does, but Goku, see he's still really calm. So he this whole time he seems to know something that Moro doesn't, or understand something that Moro doesn't. And that's very apparent in the art, so that that's good on Toyotaro for expressing that visually uh, until Moro actually says it, and then it actually starts to take effect. And the reason why Goku is so calm, because he knows that, because he asked Moro if he had trained before, because he knows that Moro's body is untrained, and he knows how much training it takes to achieve and actually control Ultra Instinct, 
Um, but Moro's body is not uh, enough to be able to control it. However, it is kind of weird because it's a copy. So when you copy, you, you copy all the abilities and thus I feel like it would copy everything including the ability to control those powers you know what i'm saying um so it, it's it's kind of weird but also makes sense at the same time uh, but what do you guys think about that so moro's uh, body goes haywire because he can't control the power how awesome would this have been if moro was the cause of his own downfall up to this point that would have been extremely poignant because in recent chapters he's been so full of himself and so arrogant and how he was saying that he's better than the gods because he eats what the gods create and for it to kind of backfire on him at this point would be so great but um the reason it got to this point is because of goku and goku's um, dumb actions uh, so uh, he ends up essentially defeating Moro again because Moro just can't control all that power and finally again Whis tells Goku hey dude end this now but it's too late because Moro uh, realizing that his body wasn't enough to contain that amount of energy feels like hey a big a bigger body should be able to do it so he literally fuses with earth and i love this panel that i might use for the thumbnail of moro's half of moro's face popping up out of the ground like this is perfect time for halloween guys this is a really cool drawing here um and then he mouth beams goku uh really cool stuff i think it's very interesting and really drives home how interesting Moro's magical abilities are. Uh, so he blasts Goku, but I thought it was weird that Goku just tanked the blast. And he's like, sh he's shocked. Like, he doesn't care about the blast. Like, what was the point of the blast if nothing is going to come of it? So uh, that was just kind of weird to me. Um, but Moro's like, aha, I don't have my limits anymore. Because they talked about how Moro finally reached his limits. Um, with the power of the angel. Um, so thanks a lot, Goku. You have fucked everybody. <laughs> Although I will say that this is a very easy win for Vegeta now, because all he has to do is, you know, flick the earth <laughs> and then boom, uh, Moro is split from the earth and or 7-3. Um, so uh, very interesting stuff. This would have been a really great chapter if not for all the Goku crap. Um, he just purposefully was dragging out, not killing Moro, just so that Moro can fuse with the Earth. I feel like that could have been done in like half the chapter. Um, but uh, still some really cool stuff, really cool ideas in there. I just wish it was written better, you know what I'm saying? So you guys uh, drop your thought waves down in the comments below. What did you think of the chapter? Thanks a lot for watching and take it easy.